When reflecting on the most satisfying combat I've experienced, there are many games that come to mind. I really enjoy the freedom and control you have with aiming your shots and shooters, the rush of chaining through stylish combos in action games, the methodical engagement of an encounter that keeps you on your toes, the sense of play and dynamic outcomes with physics-based mechanics, and between all this, having satisfying movement to keep the flow of gameplay strong. While many games have exceeded in some of these aspects, I find there is a lot of potential for one that delivers on all. There are indeed games that have tried exploring this more to some success, but I believe there's still a lot of unexplored gameplay potential in the space. With Withersworn, this is the direction I'll be heading for combat, and while it has been some time since my last video, I have been very hard at work these past months laying the foundations for these systems. Similar to Devil May Cry, your ranged and melee weapons are on different inputs, so you can flow between them without having to manually swap weapons before attacking. Unlike Devil May Cry, however, your ranged weapon has a free aim control, just like in first or third person shooters. You can either hip fire or aim, and even shoot during actions like grappling, wall running, dodging, and even during mixes of multiple actions. If your gun is out and you dash in the air, you will perform an air dive which lands in prone. This is similar to the Max Payne games, but without the slow motion bullet time, and although I haven't had a chance to play Helldivers yet, I see they have something similar, which might give you an idea as well. Guns can also affect how you maneuver. If shooting with a shotgun, the recoil from hitting something close can launch you, and this has many settings to tweak, like if the recoil requires a hit, the distance, if it will be ignored at certain velocities, and options to recoil only in certain directions or on ground or air. Explosions can also launch both you, objects, and enemies, allowing for rocket jumping and other tactics. Further customization allows the fire mode to be set from single shot, burst, or automatic, and you can set the rounds for burst, burst duration, burst rate, fire rate, damage, and force of the weapon, as well as any special function like charge attacking. There are options for both hit scan and spawn projectiles that have even further customization of their own. As you can see, there are tons of modular aspects. Guns have even more with custom animations, reticles, lights, and more. I'm a big fan of games like Dead Space which use diegetic UI, which are immersive interfaces that are built into the game world. The aiming crosshairs will be done in a similar fashion, with options for laser sights, and the weapon swapping will be immersive as well, through an in-world technique called manifestation. Resin users who have developed a resin core in their brain can infuse a special disc into their spine called memory discs. These allow the user to bind certain resin objects or weapons to themselves, which they can then summon or dismiss at will. As this is such a delicate process, you can visit goldsmiths who will be able to perform the surgery where you can equip large loadouts of 12 range and 12 melee weapons. These will be on radial menus, which allow for quick swapping and visually will probably look quite similar to the royal arms in Final Fantasy XV when selecting. There is still a lot to be improved with this system, but I'm pretty happy with how it's developed as the creation process improves with each edition. I'm going to be working on more procedural rigged all hit system, so outside of objects there isn't much juice to the guns or hit feedback yet. For balance I plan to utilize openings where a ranged weapon can sometimes shine, and some enemies will have shields and strategies against them. Small and fast enemies in large numbers will often be great targets for your ranged attacks, or at least will hardly be phased outside of openings. With this in mind, I would like to have a similar approach for the melee weapons, where each one will have its own advantages and playstyle, but you could still use what you're comfortable with. I plan to have something that might feel similar to Monster Hunter, where each weapon will have its own weight, risks, benefits, and actions it can perform. The gameplay, however, will allow for quick action combos and swapping between these weapons similar to Devil May Cry. I'm also taking a lot of inspiration from games like Smash Bros, where inputs are simple and intuitive, with satisfying feedback and allow for depth and mastery. Melee strikes can be performed individually or strung together in combos, and you can also uppercut an enemy into the air, which leaves them open to aerial combos. Each of these attacks can be charged, and have several charge levels which can affect the power and output of the attack. Unlike most games which restrict your movement while attacking, and with their sworn you can maintain your mobility during both the charge and the strike. I'm really happy with how this feels, as it gives a lot of control and flow while playing, and after trying it, other games may feel quite cumbersome in comparison. To keep your momentum going when attacking at high speeds, your strikes will have alternate behaviors when used at certain thresholds. 
For example, with the Twin Blade, you unleash a spin attack and can keep the spin going by continuing to tap the attack button. The block and parry works nearly identical to Sekiro's, where timing it fast enough can parry or deflect an enemy attack and block it if held past that point. Also, like Sekiro's, if you spam block, this timing window drops down, and if you break an enemy's posture through a parry, you will have an opening for a finisher. I have yet to add finishers, but did add a dynamic camera that focuses on the targets on these openings, and it can work on objects or colossal enemies as well for cinematic shots. For gap closing, you have the option to propel yourself towards the target or pull them towards you. If going towards the target, you will briefly latch on and can either jump or attack off for a follow-up. If pulling the target, they will get flung towards you if small enough, and if held, will grab onto the target where you can either attack or throw them. Throwing isn't just for enemies, you can also throw your weapon to pierce targets and also unlocks a whole new mode of combat. Unarmed combat occurs after your melee weapon is thrown and gives you a fast close range combat fighting style. Just like your actual weapon, the unarmed is a weapon type of its own and can perform all the attacks a normal one can. Not only does it change your attacks, but it will also change the way you maneuver and many actions will have alternate behaviors. For example, your dodge will become a shorter weave on quick taps or double tapped into a roll. Similar to future planned weapons, unarmed strikes will have certain strengths and weaknesses compared to the twin blade. To smaller, fleshy creatures, your quick strikes can deliver more staggering power, but will not do as much on an armored foe, and for attacks you will have much more speed and repositioning potential. Upon retrieving your weapon, you can perform stylish pull vaults and there will be lots of ways to recall it. Pull vaulting is also something that you can perform with the twin blade equipped, as well as aerial twirls. This input while unarmed will likely be some parkour-like moves, and there's already handspringing and vaulting implemented. Each weapon will have some fun mechanic like this that affects other aspects besides just the combat, and should help find one that suits your playstyle. Another big development chunk these past months has been on the enemy AI. My goal is to create a modular setup so I can make advanced varied enemies at large scale in a solo workflow. As shown in my last video with procedural animation, I had a Boyd-like detection for avoidance and navigation, and I wanted to extend the system so I could work with multiple strategies. I made it so the enemy will instead detect and plan where it wishes to go, and will use a scoring system to find the best direction based on the obstruction data around it. To avoid edge cases with crowding, they have what I would describe as whisker-like detection, with their old Boyd-like casting and a larger avoidance glider around their main one, which acts as an emergency stop in which they will wait till a clearing occurs. For a standard forward run, I use a speed blend tree which can scale nicely to any speed. The strafing is a blend tree based on their movement direction, and as I'm not using root motion, I dynamically adjust their main speed based on the direction as well. With all this in place, all I have to do is select a movement strategy and it will perform the appropriate response. Another big addition I am quite happy with is the enemy behavior system I made to make quick and clear enemy strategies. I wanted the enemy master script to work like a brain that can work on anything from a turret to a complex boss, and the behavior system allows for this. First, I check the conditions required for a behavior to be used, and if these conditions are met, I will then check the available attack or action. These are weighted, and it will roll between them to decide which decision the enemy will use. So for example here, if the enemy is greater than 6 units away, the attack and move forward are 3 times more likely to be selected than the left or the right strafe, and the strafe back is only half as likely to be selected. Otherwise, if less than 6, the enemy will select one of these attacks at random. With this setup, I don't have to make any additional custom logic scripts, and setting up different behaviors is a very smooth process. For the attacks to also follow this quick modular setup, I had to make a few systems for this as well. I use scriptable objects to hold each attack's information, which can tell if it should have a sub-goal such as approaching before the strike, or if it will combo. If the behavior system selects an attack, it will cycle through the procedures, and other necessary functions occur on the animation events during the attack animation. One of these animation events has some cool functionality where I can select which collider groups I want to open and can customize, add, and reuse these in a quick and non-invasive way. This should be nice for boss monsters with a large amount of colliders that may attack in unusual or complex behaviors. With enemy attacks now threatening your existence, I began to work on player hit feedback. Your hitbox is very precise and will hopefully lead to some cinematic close calls during combat, and when hit you will react differently depending on the strike. 
Flinching will be from smaller hits, usually small projectiles, which don't interrupt your attacks or actions and just have a small visual impact. Staggered hits are the most common from standard enemy attacks. This can interrupt your attack unless you have high poise and can cause a hit animation to occur. I added hit feedback depending on the direction so you can be hit from the back, sides, or front, but similar to how you can move with the attacks, you can also move during these hits. While moving, your hit animation will instead stumble, and I think this feels amazing compared to games that stop and lock you in place on small hits. Most non-attack actions like grappling will also not be interrupted from these attacks, so while swinging, you don't have to worry about constantly being shot off, but will still get pushed around from the force when whacked. However, there are some bigger attacks that will stop all actions. Launched hits will stop whatever you are doing and send you flying. These will be from large weapon impacts and many colossal strikes. There's been a ton of other areas polished throughout the game, but as far as combat goes, this has been most of the recent developments. While there's still more to do, a lot of the groundwork for these systems is complete, and a lot of it was new territory for me, so it took some planning and time. I'm really happy with how it all worked out, and I'm even more excited to show what else I have planned for making the combat feel fresh and exciting. With the basics now covered, future updates will focus on more stylish attacks, as well as physics interactions. To give some idea of that direction, I'm going to test swinging and throwing objects and enemies with the grapple, as well as attaching them for unique outcomes, similar to the shenanigans you can get up to in Just Cause, or hog tying them in Red Dead Redemption. This is why enemies currently don't have much ranged weapon hit feedback yet, as after this video I will begin work on an updated ragdoll combat system to begin on the next phase of combat. For what is currently implemented, however, I have a very special surprise. If you have watched the first Withersworn devlog, you may have seen that I was planning for a demo at the end of 2024. Well, I've decided to release one sooner. Like right now, soon. If you are hoping for something that plays closer to the final vision of the game, I highly suggest waiting for a later Steamfest demo, but thought it would be nice to release a smaller test room to get a feel for the inputs, movement, and some early combat feedback. I generally wouldn't like to release this so early, as there's a lot of planned features not hooked up yet, and unfinished known conflicts that may look like unintended bugs. But everyone has been so supportive, and I think it would be cool to start bouncing some scrappy rough demos more often through development to get some more feedback on. Please just keep in mind this is a rough test version missing lots of mechanics, and not a polished demo, but there will be more like that in the future. Another announcement I would like to make is that I've started a Patreon. I've been making Withersworn solo in my spare time, and have been commissioning a composer on the side, but haven't been able to budget that in lately. With the Patreon, I can ensure development stays on track, and won't have to slow for budget reasons. Not only will it help myself have more time for the project, but extra will be used to spend with further dev tools and to commission on music and potential environment and character artists. Your support is very much appreciated. Even if you're just viewing or interested in the game, it has been a joy seeing where this one grow with you all, and I'm excited to show you all the cool plans in store for the future. If you are interested in more Withersworn content, you can subscribe here or other platforms for more frequent updates. What day is it? The 15th of June. Uh. <laughs> oh, and one more update. The reason I was away from work all June with family visiting is because on June 15th, I became a father to a healthy baby boy. I'm very excited to start this new chapter in my life and look forward to see the project grow alongside the little one. I feel this only emboldens the game's ambition as now not only do I do it for myself and you all, but I also do it for him.